Hey there, it's Robbie, W1RCP, and we are now on element two. That's the technician exam. We're in sub element five C's in Charlie. So some of this is just going to be memorization. Some of this is going to go back to some things we've already seen. So I hope this is going to be a good one for you. Let's start with question one. What describes the ability to store energy in an electric field? So now, quick story. I had a high school teacher, and his, uh, he was a physics teacher, and he kept this jar on his desk that had aluminum foil on the outside and it had water on the inside with a rod into the water that had a bulb on top, a metal bulb, and he would charge it with a piece of silk of some sort and a PVC pipe, or it might have been a microfiber cloth, I can't remember, but he would charge this thing up and with static electricity and then wait for somebody to go get the whole fidgety with it and they'd touch it and get electrocuted they get shocked from the static so that electric field he basically made a capacitor so it's measured in capacitance and uh, that was one of my favorite things to make was a Leyden jar so that is uh, uh, stores in energy in the electric field that's capacitance now, the unit of capacitance is called the farad. Farad, so you just memorize that. That's a farad. You also have the ohm, which is resistance. The volt, that is electromotive force. And the henry, which is inductance, and we'll see that one here very shortly. What describes the ability to store energy in a magnetic field? Another cool thing you can do with electricity. Now, before... Before I give you the answer, you can see it on the screen, it's inductance, but you can make an electromagnet by taking a coil of wire and wrapping it a couple times around a nail and then sticking it to a 1.5 volt battery or a 9 volt battery and it'll make a magnetic field. And so you basically make a crude inductor. So that is inductance. And what is the unit of inductance? Well, that's a big old unit. It's called the Henry. And we go down to the unit of impedance. Now, impedance and resistance are very similar. Impedance and resistance are both measured in ohms. Impedance is resistance to alternating current, whereas the resistance is resistance to direct current. Alrighty, and what does the abbreviation RF mean? Radio frequency signals of all types. Radio frequency. Let's remember that. Okay, now we're getting to question number seven. And what is the abbreviation for megahertz? Well, we learned in the previous section that mega is 10 to the 6th power, and that's denoted with a capital M. So that's megahertz. And let me see if I have this one. Uh, oh, I bet I don't have this one up there. Daggummit. Uh, but uh, I do have this one, and I'm going to go ahead and show this to you really quick. Um, ignore the questions, because we haven't got there yet. But mega is up there, 10 to the 6. It's a capital M. M. So you can look back at that chart, the stuff that we learned earlier, it was on there. Alrighty, so megahertz, capital M, capital H, lowercase z for hertz. Alrighty, T5C, question number eight. You want to remember this formula, pi. We all love pi, right? What is the formula you use to calculate electrical power in a DC circuit? And that is P power equals I intensity or current equals E electromotive force or voltage. Now, you can also remember it PIV, but NCVEC decided not to use the letter V. They used E for electromotive force. So that is the answer. The rest of these, ignore them. P equals I times E. Remember, pi. Okay, so let's go to question number nine. 
we're going to use a collector. Okay, so are you ready for this? Question number nine says, how much power is delivered by a voltage, that's your electromotive force, of 13.8 volts DC and a current of 10 amperes? Well, if you look above that, I have P equals I times E, pi. Well, all we have to do is multiply the voltage times the current. So E is voltage, so we have 13.8 times 10 amperes. Now you could probably do this math in your head. That's 138 watts. Bam! There's our answer right there. And how much power is delivered? By a voltage, that's your electromotive force, or E, of 12 volts DC, and a current, that is I, your intensity, of 2.5 amperes. So we have current of 2.5 amps times 12 volts, and that gives you 30 watts. So that's questions 9 and 10. You can use the formula. You're going to have to memorize it because on the test, it may ask you question 8 or question 9 or question 10. It's only going to pull one of these questions. There are 35 sections and there's 35 questions on the technician exam. So you're only going to see one of these. Let's go down to question number 11, and we're going to move the calculator over. Well, we have something very similar here. We have how much current is required to deliver 120 watts. So it's already given us power. Oh, no. And a voltage of 12 volts DC. Oh, no, they gave us voltage, but we don't know the current because that's what it's asking for. Use a little bit of algebra. If you look to the right side, I put P equals I times E, because everybody loves pi. They gave us power, and they gave us E, the electromotive force or voltage. So we need to isolate I, the current. So you divide both sides by E. That takes away the E on the right side and puts it on the left side as division. So now we have a formula that we can use our calculator. And let's clear it. We have power is 120 watts divided by 12 volts. You could do this in your head, too. That is 10 amperes of current. That is the intensity, 10 amperes. So that's how you get to the answer for number 11. Now let's go back to the chrome and look at number 12. What is impedance? Impedance is sort of like resistance, and that is the opposition to AC current flow. Resistance is DC. Remember, I just said that a little while ago. Impedance, and I should have used the word impedance earlier, and I bet I didn't, but that is the opposition to AC current flow. And now let's take a look at number 13 again. So what is the abbreviation for kilohertz? I've got a lot on this screen because I even asked, why is it that the K is not capitalized? You have to remember it's a lowercase k. And of course, with hertz, it's a capital H, lowercase z. So if you look at the chart, kilo is a lowercase k. So freaking weird. So I looked it up. This is probably from the Edia Wiki and Pedia Wiki. It is used in the international system of units, and it has a symbol K. And of course, we're talking about kilo. Kilo is derived from a Greek word that I'm not even going to try to pronounce, and it's called maybe chili, but it means a thousand. So. That doesn't explain why it's a lowercase. The theory is that Kelvin is an uppercase K. So maybe not to mix the two up, Kelvin is the measure of the absolute temperature scale or how much heat there is. 
and kilo is a lowercase k because Kelvin is already uppercase. So that most likely is the only reason that question that question is even on there. So it's just to 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 get you to notice that uh, there is a difference. So with that, we have completed the section C from sub element or L, uh, <laughs> can't even do it sub element two and that's uh part five c alrighty so again i'm rob w1 rcp and we are studying for the technician exam just as hard as we can go i hope that these have been helpful and we're about to get into some more formulas in algebra stay tuned in 73